I'm going to show you how to use your GoPro as a live webcam on Facebook Live. Um, I looked around for a video for a while to see how to do this. I couldn't find anyone that explained it very well. Everyone tried to sell me software or tell me that I needed a different cable or just to set the settings in a set way and it would work. But in reality, I don't think any of their videos worked. And so I don't think that I've seen a clear video on YouTube yet of how to explain how to do this. So I thought I'd do a very, very quick video. Um, all you need is you need a GoPro Hero 4. Hero 3, you can plug in without all this, straight with a cable, and it will come up as a... Um, on your my computer comes up with a folder you go through the structure and you can copy the settings then copy it into the software or you can connect to the Wi-Fi um, and use it as a wireless Wi-Fi um, webcam and you can copy the IP address off of it um, through command prompt and then copy it into the software and it lets you do that but Hero 4 has had that um, facility locked by GoPro so what you've got to do is you've got to do something else. You've got to use a cable and another piece of kit. So what you do is you use a micro HDMI, you plug it into the side. I'll just do this as we're doing it. Plug it into the side. Then you get one of these, my one's called an HD grabber, but it's just a capture card. This is one of the cheap ones off eBay that you get from China. This is about 40, 45 pounds. You can get one called a Black Magic Capture Card, which is the semi-professional one, and it's about 70 to 80 pounds, and the quality is much better. Very similar settings, but when you actually see the picture, when you use it with your GoPro, you'll see that it's different. But if you just want to get going and you want to do like little events or parties or you just want to learn, then this is the good way to go just to get it going. But I would definitely advise it's worth getting the Black Magic uh, Capture Card. Better drivers, better picture, slightly easier to use, less bugs as well. Um, but this is a good one to start with. You'll get drivers with this, so you have to install the drivers on your laptop first. Then once you've taken this, it comes out as a mini HDMI. So you plug the mini HDMI into the capture card. And then now that means that your picture that's coming out of your GoPro is being going down the cable and the, the HDMI grabber, the is converting it into a usable signal that goes into your laptop as USB. So now it recognises it as almost like a webcam and it's this piece of kit that turns it because without that it's not usable, it doesn't recognise it. Okay. All you do is you plug it in, you'll hear the noise. There we go. And then what I do is I use a piece of software called OBS Studio and it's a free piece of software for Windows. Some people who use Macs will use a different piece of software, but OBS is really simple, it lets you use up to three different cameras, um, you can put the same audio over all three or you can change the audio, it means um, if you're doing an event you can change the views, you can do what you want or you can just have a simple one shot view of a live event where it's maybe a speaker but you could jump around, you could show the crowd, things like that or you could show a sponsor while they're on the break or things like that, okay? Um, all you do is once you've plugged it in and you load OBS Studio, you go into one of the scenes you hit plus and you go to video capture device, you go to create new there, and then at the top there's a drop down menu. It has the webcam, it has something else, and then it has a uh, video stream. And if I wait two seconds, it should come up with, and here we go. So it comes up quite small, so you drag it over the whole screen, and then now what it's doing is, what I like to do, because, the, because it's a different orientation, even though it's still wide, is I normally do, most of the screen and then I put up a little banner on the side with details so that it balances but you can decide how you want to do it you can set it up in loads of different ways but basically what you can see on the screen is exactly what's happening now on my webcam so I can look at that I can look at me whatever's going on so now you can see that the signal coming from the GoPro Hero 4 is coming through on OBS Studio now what you need to do is you need to open Facebook. If you open Facebook, you go to your page. So basically this is to be used with a like page, not with a personal account, it's a like page. So if you've got 400, 600, 2000 followers, these people will all see your live stream, okay? What you do is you click on publishing tools, which is in the middle at the top, and it brings up a new screen that's got lots of video content. Then you click on video on the left hand side in the middle. 
Okay, just like that. And it comes up with second top right is live plus. And you click that. Oh, it's thinking I'm doing something else. And this brings up a thing called create live video. Okay, and this gives you a bunch of details. This is These are the details that you need to copy into your software so that it links them together. Okay? Once it links them together, the software will send it to Facebook and Facebook will then put it up. So it creates that link all the way from your camera, through your capture card, onto your laptop, through the software, onto Facebook, and then whatever you do control-wise to the software will show, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So what I do is I take the server stream, which is at the bottom, and I copy that. Okay? I take it, I copy it, I then go back into OBS Studio, and in the top left-hand corner I hit, file and settings and it comes up with a window and you hit stream and I hit that, I hit paste and then I hit OK, right? Now, that's me put the Facebook settings in and all I'm going to do now is, this is the bit that I always get the wrong way around and then I wonder why it's not working. Once you put the Facebook settings in, you hit start streaming, which means it starts the feed of what you're showing, okay? Whatever's in uh, the window, it will start showing. Okay, and then now what I do is I go into Facebook and I hit next, and it will look for my video stream, whatever's showing on here. Fetching video stream, fetching video stream can take a few seconds, and it should find. Here we go. Preview, and what's actually happening is I have it on the wrong thing. So transition. That's it switched over. It's now picking up actually the audio from the GoPro. I'll show you what to do with that. That's it switched over. It's now picking up actually the audio from the GoPro. There I'll you show go. You what to do and on that. the screen it's showing it. Right, what I'll do is on OBS I'll mute I'll mute the audio so you can you don't have to hear me and my my rubbish chat. And on the screen it's showing it. See? What I'll do is on OBS Okay, so that's it done. So you can see now on Facebook it's showing the preview of what I'm showing and it's got four or five second delay, something like that. You saw that coming up. Now what would happen is all you do is literally hit go live and it takes it live, okay? And that's you. You've connected your GoPro, you put the drivers on, you use the capture card, you plugged it in, it notices it, you select it through OBS, you copy and then you bring it down and it live previews. Okay, now what happens is you inside of OBS you can have multiple screens so I can load number two and I can bring up something else so if I wanted to put image in and I go okay it will let me look for an image on my computer and I, I'll bring up an image that I've maybe used at a past event from my desktop let's see on my desktop and I'll use one of my logos. So I'll use this, I put it up, there's my logo with a clear background, I hit OK and now that's there. So what I do is I stretch it, it's actually not a very good logo because it's the wrong way around, but then all I would do is, if you see on Facebook it's previewing this, now if I do switch transition and it goes over to that way, it switches them round because the one on the right is what's showing and what will happen is, watch this, the stream will change. There we go. Okay? So what you're doing is you're controlling what screen and you can preload as many of these as you want so you could have different cameras, different pictures, whatever's going on. We'll put it back to transition so it's on video. Okay? Right. That's the basics. I'll put in the description below um, some tutorials of how to use OBS a bit better, maybe add some extra features. I'll also put some Facebook Live stuff on. I might even put some of the examples of the crap videos that people tried to say how to make these work when they didn't have a clue. Um, and I'll put a link to how to buy a capture card and how to get the black magic one that's even better that you really want to save up some money and get. Um, and I should really buy one. Um, but here are a couple of my pieces of advice. Um, number one, get an external sound card. Um, you saw what happened with my GoPro, I plugged it in, it picked up the 
audio through HDMI, but you, when you're doing a live event, you do not want it that way. What you want to do is you want to have, even a, this is like 10 pounds off eBay. If you're serious, you're gonna get a 80, 150, 200 pound sound card, and that'll let you take the sound off the, the mixing desk that the guy who's doing the sound can do. You just literally send it across and it'll plug in. Or um, you can plug in a microphone if you wanted to, straight to it. Or you can plug in like a DJ mixer at an event, anything you want, but it puts something between the person who's making the noise and the laptop. And it means that you have some control. The more complicated your sound card is, the more settings you're able to play around with on the laptop. You do effects, whatever it's gonna be but it works really well because most of the time you're doing these events, the most important bit is the audio, okay? Um, secondly, if you're using GoPros, you want some clamps, some really, really good, very flexible, can do anything clamps. I use this one to attach to a table. I would also advise to maybe get one or two of the actual um, technical looking clamps that you can put onto a lighting rig or onto a stage or onto someone's chair or uh, maybe onto the side of a speaker on a handle. What will happen very quickly is you will get two or three cameras and you'll jump around looking at someone straight on, looking at side on. You're doing an event, you want a right side, a left side and a middle. So you'll need three sets of clamps. The third piece of advice will then be you need three sets of cables. Okay, you, need, you can use signal cable. The problem you're gonna have is the battery only lasts for up to two hours. Okay, roughly two hours. So if you've got an event, like a sporting event that's gonna last three hours, if you've got a, a live music event that can last four, five, six hours, you're gonna have to run power and signal to the GoPro. So you're gonna need two cables times three if you use three cameras. So that's the last thing you need to buy, okay? so. Number one, sound card. Definite sound card with cables. Two, clamps. And three, cables. Power and signal, okay? So once you've bought a capture card and you know it's working and you've found your free software, then try and expand a little bit and get all these things in. The benefit of using this free software is that you have more control and you can put more content. You can put graphics and logos over the picture, you can fade things in and out, you can make nice animations, you can do company videos to start with, then it can go into it, take a break, come out, show pictures, phone numbers, anything, websites, all this kind of stuff. But the way to do it is to do the work before and then also have the kit. It's not an expensive bit of kit if you think you're doing, you could be live streaming to thousands of people and it costs you maybe 400 pounds or 400 dollars in kit for a whole setup brand new. If you're buying bits used, you could probably spend two or 300 pounds and get all the kit used and all you do is plug into your laptop with free software, okay? If you've got any questions, put them down below. Um, any good questions, I'll answer them as much as I can and I might even do a follow-up video to show you a couple of things that I do and um, maybe a bit more inside the software. But the best thing to do is try it and once you try it, you'll get on top of it, no problem. Okay. Hope that was helpful.